All righty. So this is very introductory level threat modeling. If you've ever done threat modeling before, uh, you probably know all this. So what exactly is it when I say threat modeling? Well, you're working to, according to OWASP, identify, communicate, and understand threats when protecting something of value. And actually, it came from 1999. There were some people at Microsoft who the original form of threat modeling was called attack trees, which actually is still used today. And they wrote up like an internal blog post telling everybody like, here's how we should look at the threats to our products and kind of advance past, you know, just attack trees. And that actually became what's called the stride methodology. So if you're into history, this is actually a kind of a fun dive to see where it all came from. You can blame Microsoft, I guess. And uh, actually you probably threat model all the time. Do you go camping? Do you decide to like go outside and eat somewhere on a porch? Well, you probably look at the weather. You probably lock the doors when you leave the house. Well, why do you look at the weather? You're trying to assess if you need to mitigate anything like rain by bringing an umbrella or why do you lock the doors? I mean, depending where you live, you're probably trying to discourage people from just wandering in and taking maybe your, you know, Nintendo Switch or giant TV. When you're posting images online, I know some people are much more cautious than others. Uh, do you worry about geotagging or the EXIF data that says where exactly you are? Uh, do you actually make sure that the people in the picture consent to it? Are you, you know, posting a picture in front of the Eiffel Tower while you're away? Or do you wait until you get back home? Do you post a picture that has like your work badge that says where you work? Some people do because their threat model says they don't care. And some people don't. Uh, by the way, never post a picture of your boarding pass until you're done flying. And even when you're done flying, it's maybe not the best plan. There's a great blog online, just Google it. So what can you threat model? Systems, networks, applications, machines, data, anything. You could threat model your birthday party if you wanted to. Uh, I'm sure there are some people who do. And when do you threat model? Now, always, as soon as possible. And the reason for that is because the earlier that you consider what could go wrong, you could completely redesign a system and go about it in a different way so that there's not that threat or vulnerability before you wrote any of the code. And that's way easier than on some system that's been around forever, right? But now is much better than never. So even if you do have something that's already designed, if you're making some kind of change or addition, or even if you're just suddenly responsible for it, you can certainly still do a threat model unless you're gonna decommission it, then just yeah, don't bother. Uh, so why threat model? Poop happens. It's, I, I think it's the nicest thing I could say about that. You can't fix something that you don't know about. You can't protect things that you don't know if you have. And why not design something a little bit safer or a little bit less likely to get abused? And criminals, script kiddies, pranksters, showdown safari goers, and bounty hunters, which we do pay money to here, uh, they have time and they have motivation, especially the bounty hunters. Like we hand them money. So I mean, money is motivator, right? Also notice I said criminals, not hackers. Uh, hacking itself is not a crime. We employ lots of hackers, myself included, Mark Loveless, like just putting that out there. So what is the different methodologies? It boils down to this. Many of them say it in different ways, but first you have to create a representation of the system. This could be a really formal architecture diagram. In our case, don't use our architecture diagram. It's really, really big and confusing. <laughs> if any of you have looked at it recently, you could use a Visio sketch. You could use a data flow diagram you really could just doodle something on a piece of paper or a white pad. Like it doesn't actually have to be technically logically perfect. Again, your goal is to say, where is the boundary of a system? Where does this container connect to another container? Where does this container connect to a user? Is it going through anything? So 
however you want to represent that. And you can also scope it down as small as possible. So instead of becoming really overwhelmed, if you're just adding one part of an API, just start with your one new additional API call, follow it up to what does that connect through? How does it authorize? What data points does it see? Start there. You can always keep adding to it later. The next thing is classify everything. We actually have classifications based on color here at GitLab. So if you haven't read that, I have a link to it in the slides. And you should really take into account not just data, but resources. Is there a CPU that we allow users to use? Is there storage that we let people use? Um, so for those of you who don't know, I used to work at Rackspace and you know, if you let people have a free account, and I'm sure AWS has this problem as well, they might decide to store stolen movies. And, you know, that takes up a lot of space and it's really not giving you value and it's not kind of the intended use. So what is it that could be used or abused data and resource wise? And then the next part is, what are the threats? And there's actually fun decks of cards that you can use for this. That's one of the uh, threat modeling methodologies. You can also just find lists online. So if you like thinking in personas, who is it that's going to go after these resources? Is it going to be a crypto miner? Is it going to be a criminal? Is it going to be a stalker? And yes, you can end up with stalkers. So if somebody breaks up with their ex, somebody could use their repo to see, are they currently active? Potentially could see, where are they? Did they move? Uh, and once you kind of know where someone is vaguely, you can start pinning them down. Or if you get their email address, because they changed email addresses to hide from you, you can start sending them harassing emails again. So there's all different, people may go after individual users, they may go after you as a company, they may go after a company of users, because there's something interesting in there. Uh, so finally, you have identified kind of who is trying to get at what. And you have a you know little diagram of where that all is. What ways can you put in mitigations? Can you limit calls? Uh, so, does everyone remember the Apple iPad Gen One? There was an API flaw where you could just iterate through numerically to get basically every Apple user's email address and phone number. Uh, that wasn't rate limited. So, can you put in a rate limit? Can you put in authorization? Like, it doesn't have to be super fancy protect against zero day. Sometimes it's just, how can we make sure that this is only usable in certain circumstances? And this is actually most common in mobile apps. Mobile apps usually don't authorize their APIs at all. They assume if it's coming from the mobile app, it obviously can be trusted. They obviously don't know about burp suite and proxies. And once you kind of say, I'm gonna mitigate by doing this, have somebody on the team be the criminal or the antagonist and be like, well, okay, if you put in a firewall there, I'm going to try and spoof or whatever. And just, did you actually solve the problem you were aiming to solve? Don't get obsessed with this. Like you can go on for hours and hours and hours. So just try and keep it to, you know, the top items. So what are the frameworks out there? There's like over a dozen. Uh, I think the most commonly known are Stride, CVSS. I'm sure we're all familiar with that one. Um, I personally like the HTMM because that uses personas. And it says, what are these personas going to go after? Because you classify your, the targets. And how are they most likely? Uh, or what tools or methods are they going to use? Um, Microsoft has a bunch of stuff out there that came from Stride that you can look at. They're like advanced versions of or, or more complex versions of. And there's also a couple like Vast and Trike who are not only a methodology, but they're also a tool. So if you want to learn something that has its own built-in tool, that's a good place to start. And for everyone who hasn't seen this XKCD comic, 50 billion competing standards, I'm sure there's going to be more of these choices. Uh, we could even invent our own if we wanted to. All right, so we had talked about tools. Uh, here's, again, I said Vast and Trike were their own tools. So here's a bunch of tools. A lot of them are open source and free. There's also companies that will sell you them for 
boatloads of money. Um, so do whatever you want to do. Uh, OWASP Threat Dragon will work on for free on a GitHub repo. So if you happen to have a forked repo hanging around or a repo of code somewhere, you can run it against that to see what it generates. Um, all of my projects in GitHub are food-based and beer-based, so it wasn't able to come up with anything. But I tried. All right. So you picked some kind of formal method or not. You picked a tool, or you're just using pen and paper because that's totally valid. You created a network diagram. You now have tons of ideas on a whiteboard somewhere or note cards. Uh, that's great, but like, does it, but there are so many. It's kind of like looking at the vulnerability list when you run, you know, 50 billion DAS scans. Uh, it's early, to, it's important to start early so that you can decide which ones of these you want to go after. Uh, did we waste our time by coming up with all of those? Not really. This is just the exact same thing you have to do when you're looking at the vulnerability list. What's the more, most important project? Out of the most important project, or in this case, maybe the most important data or most important piece of the system, what is the most likely risk? If you don't know what the most likely risk is, CVSS, if you actually dig into some of them, will explain some of them. Also, the Verizon breach report and similar reports will tell you over the past year what the most common attacks on the internet are. So what's most common, what's most valuable, then you can do like a rice or ROI. Start there. Don't try and eat the entire element. Just keep nibbling in one spot and going. And the other thing you may want to take into account is, is any of the particular data, even if you don't feel it's valuable, going to get you a legal fine, CCPA, GDPR, etc. So those, like, even though you're like, meh, I don't care about email addresses. Well, maybe we do need to care a little bit more about the email address. All right, so I will give a simple example and then turn this off and then we can all kind of play with an example together on whatever we want. So I'm gonna give a really simple one. What are we trying to do? In this particular case, I'm going to say we're going to try and stay alive with a pet cat. What valuables do we have? Well, I have blood and skin uh, and I wanna keep them working. The threat, Kitty claws and teeth. If you've ever had a kitten, you totally know how this goes. Mitigation. I can trim the kitty's nails, right? I could put those little plastic cappies on the cat's nails. I could hide in another room and close the door from the cat. Did that fix it? Well, if I hide in the other room, I don't get to play with the cat. So that was kind of a dumb one. But during the ideation phase, you kind of come up with everything. The other two could fix it. The question is, is the cat gonna sit there and let me put glue on its, cause I don't know if you've ever done the cats, but you have to do the glue and then put things on and then get the cat to sit still for a minute. That's a challenge. So I think the easiest ROI, get the clippers, clip, clip, clip. Cat's no longer gonna kill you and remove all your blood. By the way, the doggy removed all my flesh. So cats, dogs, dangerous, you know, watch out. And then this is based on the oatmeal. If you've never read the oatmeal, uh, he has a book called Your Cat is Trying to Kill You. That's where the example came from. Let me go ahead and stop the recording.